My name is Kelly Hood and I work with Optic Cyber Solutions. Today I want to provide you a quick overview of the privacy framework um, and to take a quick walk through what are the different components and the pieces um, that can help you. So to, to start off here with what is the privacy framework, what's in it, um, it's broken down into three primary components. We have the core, the profiles, and the tiers. And now if you're familiar with the cybersecurity framework that was released back in 2014, um, or may have watched a previous video we put out on the cybersecurity framework, uh, you'll notice that these are quite familiar because it, it does have the same structure. We have those three same components. And that was created by design because NIST really wanted to make sure that both of these frameworks, while created for different purposes, Purposes, you know, one for privacy, one for cybersecurity, um, there's still a lot of overlap and they wanted to make sure that people could use them in parallel as, as they wanted or use them together if that made sense for your organization. But for now, yeah, the privacy framework has three core components that we see here and now we'll walk through each of them. So the first component is the core. And the core is really a set of um, outcomes, of privacy outcomes that, that, uh, that is helping us to define what, what does privacy mean? What do we need to be considering in our privacy program? And those outcomes are organized into functions that, that we can see here. The identify, govern, control, communicate, and protect. Those are the five functions that all of the, the high level ideas that we need to consider when building out our privacy program. Those functions then can be broken down into categories that we can see a few that we've pulled out here at the um, at, it's still a high level concept but it, we've got a hierarchy that we're building going from the functions to the categories and then ultimately to subcategories at the lowest level here and we can see that even at this lowest level where there's about a hundred subcategories they're um, they're still not telling you how to do something because they NIST wanted to be uh, not prescriptive as I mentioned um, but to give you that guidance to say you need to make sure that for uh, CTDMP4 data elements can be accessed for deletion, but we're not going to tell you how to do that because that's up to your organization and not all companies are the same. So they're telling you, yeah, what are those outcomes? What are those things we need to achieve without telling you how to do that or a specific way that may or may not work for you? Next, we have the tiers. And the tiers we can see here help us understand our privacy risk and communicate that risk across our organization. Now, the implementation tiers that have been defined are broken down into four different tiers or tier or levels, um, from partial to risk informed to repeatable and then adaptive at the highest level. Um, so organizations look at tiers in a lot of different ways. You can decide to be a particular tier for your entire privacy program and say, we really want to be a tier three and have repeatable processes that we know we can trust and that everybody's aware of. Um, you may decide that a two is appropriate and you just want to be risk informed, but maybe you're a small company or you don't have any specific privacy requirements and regulations that you have to meet. And so they may not need to be as robust, or you may decide that based on all of your requirements, you really need to be adaptive and, and at that highest level. But that's one of the nice things about the tiers and, and what kind of sets it, sets it apart from a maturity model, where we're often trying to strive to be that highest maturity level. Here, it's, it's not uh, inherent in the tiers that we're trying to be that highest level. And we want to make sure that we're having the conversations to help organizations pick the tier that, that is most suitable for them and that meets their risk tolerance and will help them to manage their risks. And then finally, we have the privacy framework profiles. And profiles are really a way to capture all this information we've been talking about with the, the core um, defining those outcomes and the tiers defining you know, how uh, you know, mature or how sophisticated we want these practices to be to meet our risk tolerance. Um, we, we need a place to put that. And so a lot of times that ends up being a profile and it's a really great way to capture that information. And there's a lot of ways to create a profile. I've seen companies do it as a spreadsheet is a lot of times how I like to create it because it helps me to map everything out. Um, I've seen people use graphics or pie charts or different ways to represent basically what's what you're doing today as it relates back to the core. Um, here we can see an example on the screen where we have the core where we that have the five functions laid out um, but the current profiles, we're looking at that and we can see that there are two functions missing. So they currently, it looks like there are, some, there are things currently in place for identify, govern, and protect, but they're not currently doing anything for control and communicate. Um, so in that target profile that we're seeing the graphic there, they have added things to also include the control and communicate functions. Um, but really it's just, yeah, the profiles are a way to document and communicate what are you doing today, where do you want to go, and to have all of that in one place 
place. And it's also a great place where you can start pulling in your uh, legal and regulatory requirements um, if, and have that included. As this is a framework, you can, it's very flexible. And if you have additional business requirements or legal requirements, you can bring those in and document them here as well. Uh, so all in all, there are several benefits for using the privacy framework. Uh, we talked through those three core components, but I just wanted to summarize here that some of the, the really uh, the key benefits that I see organizations getting out of using a framework like this is that common language. Knowing that we can communicate using the same terms and mean the same things is critical. Um, providing opportunities for collaboration, both internally and externally within your organization. Providing a way that we can align those compliance standards through that profile, using the core and mapping all of those requirements, um, a way to, once you have that documented, to demonstrate due care, increase awareness across your supply chain or ecosystem, um, and help you manage cost-effective improvements uh, based on having an understanding, a better understanding maybe, of what you have and what you are doing today and where you might want to improve and where you might have larger gaps, and to uh, ultimately help you to measure improvements across your privacy program by having all of this documented and laid out. So I think there's a lot of really great things that can be gained from using a framework like this. And then finally, I wanted to highlight a few resources and crosswalks that are out there. Um, this is pulled straight from NIST's website, and there's a link at the bottom there, and I'll also link all of these in the, in the notes under the video, so you can find a, a quick link there. But um, the community has already done a lot of mappings between the privacy framework and some of these uh, requirements and regulations that are coming out, you know, from the CCPA to GDPR and um, the new standards that are coming out. Their, NIST is constantly updating their website as these new alignments are in crosswalks are being created as so I wanted to point you there and then also um, we have some resources on our uh, optics website for creating a profile like I mentioned I like to use a spreadsheet a lot of times as a way to capture what we're doing today and to get that uh, get, get started and to get that documented as we um, are building out our privacy program we also have a risk register template to help document some of your risks and have a way to manage that and map it back and forth as well as a link to uh, several of the specific NIST resources I've mentioned with the crosswalks there is also a few use cases if you want to look at um, different points of view from organizations of different size to look Look there and I'll have all these linked below the video as well. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was really helpful for you. Uh, my name is Kelly Hood once again and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions um, in the comments below or shoot us an email. Um, we'd love to hear from you and really hope this was helpful.